You know how, uh, like those those weird scraper algorithm websites like take any story you do and then reshuffle it with a thesaurus so that it's their own story. Yep. So I got one today that was either based on a polygon or a Kotaku story. It's it's a news story about Hypergon Sport and how we uh-huh. the the headline or whatever is like. The real one is Stadia exclusive Gunsport is preserved by sneaking it into the Steam version of its sequel. Uh And uh, the redux was Steam. A former Stadia fan hid while he played a new game. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's, That's a good story. You can't win against real style like us, Bozo. This is episode 271 of Insert Credit, a relentless array of meticulously cultivated video game topics presented every week to a panel of experts, all kept moving along by a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and one of my least favorite technical words in game design is voxel. I didn't like it. It sounds like it should have something to do with voice. It doesn't, it's bad to me. That's a really hard one to come up with off the cuff. My name is Frank Cifaldi, and one of my least favorite terms in game design. I think it's time we get past board as an indicator of progress in a game, you know, like getting to the third board. I think I think oh, we yeah. should maybe move on to like levels or something. Don't like that one, no. Uh, I, I'm Tim Rogers, and I'm already looking at my phone. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm, I already got my phone out and was just kind of looking at some some pants. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, m- my least favorite word in technical word in video game what design development uh, design was the prompt. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Voxels that designed it. Well, it ain't ray tracing. Let me tell you that. Uh, not tired of that just yet. Uh, well, I like that one. The more and more, the more money I spend on seeing it, the. Uh, the more I like that phrase, the more that phrase just uh, uh, hits my ears. Delicious, you know? I, I love it. Um, the uh, phrases I don't like, you know what? I don't like when a person from the UK, uh, in it, gov, calls any side scrolling game, uh, a particular type of side scrolling game, a belt scroller. Don't like mm. that. I don't like belt scroller. Oh, that's a good one. It's on the same level as board. Got to the third board of that belt scroller last night. <laughs> <laughs> Except, you know, you just, you know, belt scrollers, you tend to just feed them money. Was that a British person who played, like, the ocean-made, like, Spectrum port of Final Fight? They- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they slapped it up. They ate it like Wheaties, yeah. Or they ate it like uh, like Crunchy Nut or whatever they have over there. Uh, that, that's, that's Wheaties-esque. Do they have Wheaties in the UK? Uh, shout me out. Uh, I know you do. I think they have Weedabix. You know, drop a drop a letter at my uh, my doorman's uh, desk if you uh, if you if if you've got the Wheaties in, in the UK. Thank you. Right, and give me a digestive biscuit while you're at it. Sure. Oh God, a Mc a McVitie's a McVitie's. I don't know how to pronounce mm-hmm. it. I pronounced it McVitie's once in front of in front of a British person. They went, "Oh, are you serious, mate? <laughs> are Did you, you seriously pronounce it McVitie's?" <laughs> and I was like, "I don't know. <laughs> I don't walk around with people talking about digestive biscuit brands in my." in you know in my vicinity right well i got a lot of crap for calling it a kinder egg on, a, on another show so. oh a kinder <laughs> egg it's a kinder See, I egg done that i went to kindergarten yeah uh, i actually went to one <laughs> yeah. of those it wasn't in germany either it was in the united states it's weird uh speaking of brands we got a brand on this show hey, that's me i'm brandon sheffield and uh you all know i hate the quote-unquote word shmup uh, yeah. Oh, it, yeah, it's ugly. I didn't even want to say it. I didn't even want to say it to disparage it. It's a. Uh, I I felt awful saying it aloud. I refused. If you if you're gonna call a shooting game that, you might as well call a beat 'em up a mup. Yeah, and I do. I think you have to. Uh, anyway, but that's that's not a game design. I I call them beat them alls and shoot them alls. I think that's a really good. <laughs> See, the British like to say, or the French like to say, beat them all. Uh, but one, an all. actual game term that, I, that makes me a little uncomfortable is uh, spline. I don't really like spline. No, spline's not good. What about a reticulating spline? You know what word I wish would come back was nerbs. Oh yeah, nerbs. It's mm. an old 3D rendering term. I love nerbs. Yeah. I like nerbs. You know who like you know who likes that? Change. Was the original Toy Story nerbs? It was a question I heard somebody ask once, and the answer was I think. Uh, we got another folk joining us on the show. Uh, joining us this week is Bloomberg news writer and author of Game Industry Exposé's Blood, Sweat, and Pixels and Press Reset, 
the only video game journalist, Jason Schreier. Hello, I'm Jason Schreier. I've been waiting to chime in. I've been waiting to respond to Tim's many rants, but I feel like I need <laughs> to be introduced Introduced first. And now... Till you done been introduced, it's it's my show, Jerry. Until I was until gonna I... say, Tim, when you uh, don't say shoot them all, like when you say shoot them all, it sounds like shoot them all, and you don't want to say that, man. You just shoot you them all. You got to say it in a British way. You don't want to say shoot. You don't want to be shooting malls over here. Um, my least favorite technical term in game development is assets mm. just not a word that i enjoy hearing or talking about assets. it is it is useful when you are structuring a server though it's a useful word for a folder name when you're you're building a big boy pants i'm server. not saying it's a it's a useless word i'm just saying it's yeah. an uncomfortable word it's not a word that it's i like. like ashes in your mouth I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. for for somebody like me, you know, recently, uh, I I I I've had a a fraught. We some of us probably have had a fraught relationship with the with the word content, right? Yeah. Jason Schreier, have you ever written like a really? I don't know if I don't know if you've ever had this experience, Jason Schreier. Though, have you ever thoroughly researched and just just ravenously written just a, a really good? long piece of meaningful video game journal i haven't uh, like meaningful piece of video game journalism <laughs> only for someone on twitter to go to call it content have you ever had someone call one of your one of your beautiful investigative tapestries content have you ever <laughs> suffered that i i i frequently i that's what i say when i whenever i write anything i say <laughs> here's some content slop them up slop them up boys <laughs> got yeah, you some content so- Talk about it. every day I get up and I say back to work at the content mines. So There's, strap on that content feedback. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, slurp them. We should start producing some content here right now. Uh, pure podcast content. PPC baby. One of the gimmicks of this show, or the mechanics, as it were, is that every episode has a winner that I determine based on how well everybody does. And the prize for winning is that you get to come up with a question for next week's episode. Our winner last week was Cliff Blazinski. Oh, that god darn guy. Who uh, wrote us this question. Uh, Cliff Blazinski asks, What food do you associate with your best gaming memory? Oh, man. Frosted Flakes. They're great. Uh, I, I ate bowls of Frosted Flakes whilst reading. uh that's a joke about how a British person would correct me and say it's pronounced whilst whilst reading the instruction manual of Final Fantasy three for the Super Nintendo when I rented it. And uh, I just frosted flakes. And then I would always pour myself a bowl of double F while I uh, read an, a JRPG instruction manual. Perfect for Final Fantasy. Match yeah, up your frosted, yeah, double. Yeah, I know. It's 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 a, a miraculous coincidence. It could have gone the other way and become a bad memory if... Uh, uh, I'd eaten them while while reading the instruction manual for the original Final Fight for SNES, which did not have two <laughs> yeah. players. That's why you order from Dairy Queen when you play Dragon Quest. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, getting harder to do, to do that these <laughs> days because I don't, I don't know where one is. Is there a video game franchise with the, the initials WC because uh, White Castle? Wing Commander. Wing Commander. There you go. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I only I play Wing Castle. Commander in the bathroom. Mm. Uh, yeah, the water closet. <laughs> I got... I got some of these, I think. Um, there was a... Oh, by the way, as an aside, you were talking about Frosted Flakes. Um, last night I was watching a movie called Deathline, mm-hmm. and I had to pause the the intro um, credits because uh, the makeup artist was Peter Frampton. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the assistant director was Tony Teeger. And I was like, wow, they got a famous <laughs> guitarist. And Tony the Tiger. Bre- <laughs> and they got Tony the Teeger. <laughs> Uh, and it was British. That's that's how they pronounce. That's tiger, a British right? Tony the Tiger. Yeah, right. Tony Tiger. <laughs> anyway. God, I love that guy. It's like how they have their own Dennis. God, Dennis. Frosted Flakes are so good, dude. <laughs> so I have a I have a specific memory that is can, a little confusing for me because I don't really know what this food was or where where it came from, but I had it regularly during a certain period around when El Nino was hitting. Oh, the big Western baby, United States. I would get home and I would play like Dragon Force or Panzer Dragon and Saga on the Saturn. So wait, just to point out for for the younger people in the crowd, you're not talking about the uh, the really bad band Dragon Force. No, the really bad band that started <laughs> out as a, uh, as a as a white supremacist joke project, um, which that's, yeah, that's a real dude. fact. Every, everybody look it up. Um, yeah, throw your Guitar Hero controllers in the trash, everybody. That's right. Um, but... Yeah, I was I was playing the uh, the 
Saturn game, Dragon Force, which is a weird it's a strategy one. RPG kind of thing. It's pretty cool. It's got some neat ideas, but a lot of characters on the screen. There was this food that was like it was like a sourdough starter cake, and we had okay. we had this this sourdough starter that we were like keeping alive, and then I would like bake the cake really easily, and then I would have have that after school after I got home from school, and. Uh, I don't. I keep forgetting to. I gotta ask my mom because <laughs> I totally. I don't remember what sourdough that was. starter cake. Like that. That doesn't really sound like something that's real. But you remember eating. It. I ate it. I remember what it tasted okay. like. Okay. And in and those the memory of playing those games and that flavor very very closely tied. There's like a bunch of cinnamon. There's like a uh, like a brown sugar kind of crumbly top that happens when you cook it because uh, but i how how i don't know this, this is one of those things where like so that's a that's a memory from before i got that temporary amnesia that i had shoot from uh di- diving off a cliff without being prepared i would never do- dove off a cliff before I gave myself a concussion wow um and i, I lost why some... don't i know about that this is going well, how places many, oh my god how many years have i known you and i've never heard that <laughs> yeah, this is I've new lore i mentioned that yeah I, I i lost a bunch of uh memories <laughs> i've known brandon sheffield for 20 years and he he does not even know my daughter's name <laughs> Can you believe this? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just don't, I just don't care about people's personal So uh, lives. don't be surprised that you don't know something about. That's right. Uh, <laughs> anywho, um, once I find out what that food is, I'll let you know because that food is very very closely associated. It sounds like you need to schedule yourself uh, at a ASA possible a trip to Europe to increase your pastry vocabulary. <laughs> right. uh, I did that uh, at some point in the past, and it was it was very nice. Jason, do you have a uh, video game food memory? I I don't because like I never play games while eating. I feel like that's because it's like, hard, right? Yeah, it's well, the only time I'm it's not also eating. gross. It's like you, you don't want like Doritos, Cheeto man. dust on your controller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could go like all in on full capital G gamer and be like, yeah, Doritos and Mountain Dew. Uh, Tim, I like your answer because it's like while eating strategy guides, but or while reading strategy guides. But when I was a kid, I used to read strategy guides while eating everything, so I don't have anything associated with. Like, yeah. uh, with reading strategy guides, unfortunately. Mine was specifically a big bowl of Frosted Flakes while reading through the whole manual of Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy III, we called it. You can't even call it Final Fantasy III anymore. What does America come to? <laughs> this P- in this PC America, you can't even call it Final <laughs> Fantasy III. Yeah, you can't even do it. So, so it's like, tired of these woke Final Fantasy <laughs> <laughs> they're just, Yeah, they're just trying to call it Final Fantasy VI. So I'm reading through the whole manual, which, as as some people on the show may recall, was, was beautiful. It had all that Yoshitaka Amano art yeah. all over it. Yeah, of course. And then... I repeated the ritual for every, this is no joke, for every JRPG I played after that, including Chrono Trigger. It goes all the way up to Blue Dragon. I repeated the ritual for Blue Dragon because in Japan, they Mm -hmm. sell Frosted Flakes at every 7-Eleven. So it's like, it would always be Frosted Flakes and a JRPG manual. And now those don't exist anymore. The manuals, uh, Frosted Flakes are alive and delicious. They've got Avatar 2 on them now, on the box. Uh in case that means anything to anybody. It don't. I find I finally finally came up with a food one. Just it, it just hit me and everyone here except Jaffe probably can relate to this. Um just being on the press circuit for so long, I associate crappy uh, grocery store muffins. Ah, oh yeah. Sliders oh. or those small burgers and, that are and, 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 and sliders as well, but uh yeah, mostly the muffins. Yeah. The muffins, sure. yeah. I associate yeah. banana nut muffins with uh Oblivion on the Xbox 360 cuz I got to see a demo I, like a real journalist, I was allowed to watch a demo of that game and was eating a, a, a muffin. They gave a free muffin Bethesda. They always gave out muffins. And those e- that e- that E three and GDC uh, press room, I think both had the crappy muffins. Yeah, I mean, it's always a muffin, especially as a as a journalist of those days. Um, we didn't we didn't have a lot of money, and mm-hmm. often we would just be like. I'm not going to eat because I'm going to get some terrible food at this mm-hmm. junket. Right. That's Whatever what food exists, that's my meal now. Yep. Yeah. I've mentioned this before. You know, we might as well keep talking about this. Uh, I've mentioned my getting a, a, a vegetarian lunchbox at E3 uh, when the first Splinter Cell was out and my Michael Ironside was there. Um, and he was also getting a vegetarian like journalist lunch, which was very confusing to me. And I told him, I loved, uh, I loved you and Highlander too, the quickening dude. And he goes, that movie 
is what he said just kind of shook his head and it was very fun so uh that was a veggie that was like a i I can't say i can just this is much like brandon's a sourdough starter pastry uh with crumble tops uh i i don't really know what that meal was it was a wrap with a bunch of like like somewhat moist somewhat warm vegetables in it that were sliced thinly i could tell you what his side was what iron yeah very good here's my second question why is everybody so mad about Dungeons and Dragons right now? And what does it have to do with video games? Oh, oh. Is this a Jason Schreier question? I, have? I love I love the silence. I love that none of us know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> this just barely entered my purview. It's something about uh, them trying to impose some sort. I kind of know. I, I don't really cover this because it's all about it's been focused on the tabletop stuff and I don't really cover You cover that. the games industry. So you cover this, you cover slot machines. Come on. Yeah. I only cover NFTs. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I am a blockchain journalist. Jason Schreier, do you even have your, your Nevada gaming license? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> if I did, that would be a problem. I'm I'm a big, a big fan of gambling, so... Uh, Oh, if yeah. I could run in craps tables in my house, that would be a problem. I guess I would get all the winnings, but... You ever want to come over and lose at poker real bad? Uh, I'm not sure you would lose. I don't know. I'm pretty good. Uh, we should have a poker game. I do have a poker game. Submit our car comes by. Alex Navarro comes by. You should come. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we'll talk I'll, about this later. I'll text later. you after this. I'll text I don't, you after I don't want to show. embarrass anybody. That's all. I mean, because, you know, I've got... I've, you know, I don't talk about this much. Uh, I've got I've got a I've got a bit of a past as regards poker. Uh, anyway, I didn't know there was anything you didn't talk about much. <laughs> uh, well, there's there's oh there's a whole lot. I don't talk about basketball much. No, oh, we should talk about basketball. I love Come basketball. Over. We'll we'll watch the Nets and play some poker. So yeah, I mean I I can I can feel this a little bit. Um, basically, the the short version is that. Wizards of the Coast was planning on putting out this new license that would restrict people in a way that hadn't been restricted before and would essentially prevent people from selling things or making things or making money off of things. Off of their own modules. D&D rules. And, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Like, so, like, a good example of that is, like, a, a D&D podcast that would be making, like, their own set of D&D rules and selling them as books or, sell, or like, selling merchandise based off of them. And so, Wizards of the Coast... Yeah, there's this, a couple of those making bonkers money oh yeah right like a, yeah exactly a couple of those are huge. Yeah. yeah even i know about some, some of those. really good ones um and so wizards of the coast kind of walked it back and has been on an apology tour the past couple of weeks as a result uh because this all came out from a leak it was an early leak of of a ah. draft of of their plans and so they're like oh no 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 we're not we're we're walking it back so that's that's the short of it and they're all just mad. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a little uh, less mad at Dungeons and Dragons since I saw whilst uh, going to the AMC uh, at Lincoln Square to see Avatar two and IMAX 3D. I saw a big old stand up for this Dungeons and Dragons movie. It's got Chris Pine in it. I was like, Chris Pine is in a Dungeons and Dragons movie. I like that guy. He's one of the few guys that's not in any Marvel things. I guess he's in a DC thing. I'm like, I like that guy. One of the few Chris's. Who is not in Marvel? Yeah, they've got all the other Chris's in there. They they don't have they don't have Chris Pine. Uh, I'm like I'd watch that. You know what? I'll watch the stupid Warhammer TV show too. I don't care. I'm an idiot. Like I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing over here. Anyway, I saw a lot of people really mad at this Dungeons and Dragons thing. There was uh, there was some journalism done about it. There was about a million billion YouTube videos done about it. Um, and I immediately looked at it, and it just kind of reminded me of like when Nintendo was like, "We love that our fans post." gameplay videos and streams we would like all the money from the advertisements <laughs> right it it kind of felt like that it's like just kind of it 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 just makes me imagine some one of the wizards uh all of the coast uh, some <laughs> some some gandalf just waking up wizard. with uh with the with his laptop on his lap and just going and just just learning just suddenly learning one day about like uh what's one of them friends at the table Adventure Zone are those are those Dungeons and Dragons related? Yeah, what are those? critical yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, Do you think yeah. the Wizards of the Coast are basically like the Circle of Sages from the original Final Fantasy? <laughs> oh, and for, they all oh, just... oh, heck yeah, from Crescent Town or whatever. I it guarantee is. you that the wizard that did this one is uh, is the Orange County Wizard. I'm, I'm. Oh yeah, that, oh, yeah. that's the one. O C W. Sure. Yes. But it's like I just imagine some Gandalf looking, being like learning about these podcasts, like one day. Just like suddenly in the year 2023, learning about it and being like, we got to monetize that action. And uh, that's just very funny to me. 
Because, uh, you know, how did that work out for guys like Nintendo? Nintendo was trying to take some percentage of revenue yeah. of ads on streams of Nintendo games, right? And it's just something like that. It's like, it's not a good idea. Gary Gygax would be spinning in his grave. Yeah, I, I have still... uh. I have still never played Dungeons and Dragons. Not for any, not for a bad reason, not for a good reason. I've done it. Not for any reason at all. Though I think uh, if I were ever to think about thinking about playing Dungeons and Dragons, the visibility of these, the, the idea of, of, of using it as a means to generate live stream or podcast content is, uh, you know, that's that's one of the reasons there. It's a fun game to play, I will say. Having played I imagine it, it also is. Also, extremely difficult to organize scheduling-wise, yes, schedule. especially once you have children. We don't have time to get into how to play Dungeons & Dragons. Luckily, I have a Discord with 12,000 people in it, and I'm sure I could find a couple of people to play Dungeons & Dragons with me. If you're all listening and you think that's a good idea, we got tryouts. Uh, just hit me with your... Tr- <laughs> we're, I, I'm, we're having tryouts, uh, okay. Keith Ledger Joker voice. Here's a topic we've discussed before, but I think is worth revisiting in light of recent comments regarding The Last of Us. What is the greatest story that has ever been told in video games? And how do you measure that? Jeez. Oh, I don't know. I think it's heavy rain, right? Yeah, it's like heavy we rain. all agree on that. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Heavy rain is Detroit become human. Yeah. Jason Schreier is heavy rain uncomfortable for you to play because there's the part where you're looking for Jason. Yeah, where I am just I? smash the button and right. I get really excited. I'm like, yeah. wow, the game knows who I am. That's why I can't play God Hand because I am Alexander. <laughs> you get really excited because there's finally a father figure who cares about you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh that's why God. I play games. I've been looking for that. You know, I started playing games in 1989, only 2010, really. That was the peak for me. I stopped playing games after Heavy Rain. You can, you can become your own <laughs> sad dad that way. It's just hitting, hitting uh-huh. Jason button. That's great. The best story ever told in video games. There was a really good article on uh, Polygon.com about uh, uh, how The Last of Us became, quote unquote, the best story in video games. And it was all about just the atmosphere of the time of the year 2013. When it came out, it was at a certain exact stage in, in prestige television drama. It was a certain number of years after uh, No Country for Old Men had won the best picture and, and a bunch of people started to know who Cormac McCarthy was and the movie The Road was the thing. And and uh, it was at this exact stage where some you know reasonably smart people who make video games were looking in a, in a specific direction at specific types of work and, and actually kind of seeing some... It, like so no country for old men is a good example of that that's a movie that has some video gamey elements to it in a really good way right i, I mean I, I won't elaborate on that today maybe i will some other day though it's like it's, it took some smart people to be like oh uh there's a way to make a video game that at the very least impresses a huge number of people who professionally write about video games and i i noticed that i clicked on like that the tweet that linked to the polygon article after reading the article and i saw that all the replies were like uh journalists once again getting it wrong the last of us is not the best i'm like man do you not see the quotation marks on there made me a little sad it was the guy who d- developed the show the 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 chernobyl guy that craig mason right wasn't he the one who said it's the best the best story in all of video games right he said that mm-hmm. in some interview i think barack obama said it too i have heard that he put it yeah. on his reading list in 2013 <laughs> maybe uh, people freaked out about it i think what happened was bioshock infinite came out in march of 2013 and everyone mm-hmm. played that and was so disappointed they were like we gotta crown the next thing that happens That's the it. next That's story it. that comes out yeah. we gotta say this is the best thing ever troy baker escorting a girl right yes yeah, so it's a, and then three months later there's another game of troy baker escorting a girl a girl with this with a magical secret through a hostile place that's hostile in a way that kind of reminds you of a video game you've played before, but uh, it's different this time. I think the greatest story ever told in video games is in Elden Ring when you get to this area and there's like these little butterflies on like a ledge, like a precarious ledge, and you walk over and you're mm-hmm. like, ooh, butterflies, and you go and you pick it up because it's an object that you can pick up, and then as soon as you stand there, the ledge falls and you immediately die. That is the greatest story yeah, ever told. Yeah, I, I know that's sort of a joke, but like where, where my brain keeps going is like I don't think you know a, a a linear story is like the greatest video game story. No, it's, it's just systemic. A story. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah. basically just a book or a movie at that point. It's whatever weird thing happens to you is the greatest story. Like I, I was just playing. Yeah, I'm not. I was playing Weird West. 
And so the great the greatest story that happened to me this week was uh, they tried to have like a serious story. A family gets killed. I'm an older woman bounty hunter who's got to come out of retirement. Uh, and so I go to go to the town. It's been all destroyed. And the, the like the sheriff has has got me coming down to help. Uh, and the town's been destroyed. And I'm going around. I'm just looting corpses because there's no penalty for that for some reason. And then I accidentally hit the right stick the wrong direction or the left stick. And, and I jump through someone's window and they're like, thief. Very good. And then I get arrested <laughs> and then I go to jail for two weeks and then I get out and they're like, oh, good, you're here. Now let's get back to this. And everyone's in the exact same place they were, just as sad. <laughs> like, people are still mourning oh, over their good. dying loved ones who've been dying for two weeks now. Like, see, that's 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 the greatest story ever told right there. How did that happen? Right. That's why it's weird, Wes, and not normal, Wes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, weird, Wes. I think greatest story ever told in video games at large, if you want to see it, is uh, Dwarf Fortress, yes. number one. Ah, Dwarf Fortress, maybe Crusader that's Kings a good one. 3. Probably Dwarf Fortress. Though for me personally, the be- the greatest story ever told in video games was when I went to uh, uh, to grieve at my wife's grave in mm-hmm. Watch Dogs. Spoilers for Watch Dogs 1. Not my real wife's grave, everybody. Don't worry. <laughs> You've never been to that one. I, I'm not. <laughs> Dancing a jig on the Brandon, real wife's grave. Brandon doesn't even know my wife's name. <laughs> I don't even know his wife's name. <laughs> I've been to her grave, though. So, so, so I was grieving grieving at my wife's grave at watch dogs and then you know this is like press a button to grieve uh like way before press f to pay respects right and then i I walk away and i get in a car and uh i start driving and i step on the gas a little bit too (laughs) too hard and the car the car ramps up off a tombstone does a full corkscrew in the air and lands upside down in an open grave. Yeah. There's an open grave behind my wife's grave, right? And oh, man. it's like, first of all, why is the grave as big as a car? And also, it's the car is like, that's a question I didn't ask until years later. Was it like later. an oddly satisfying video, right? Where it's yeah. just the exact size and it just like slowly <laughs> yeah, it just, slid. It just, yeah, it just slid right in there. And my guy crawls out and he just kind of you know, jiggles and then clips his way out up till he's standing on top of the car and the car blows up, you know, in open world fashion. That happens. If a car is turned upside down, it blows up. Did you know this? This is a, <laughs> yes. this is a fact. Yes, I've, I've heard seen that in movies. The, the one that comes to mind for me was, um, you know, Brandon, when you and I were first playing Deadly Premonition, I think I was telling you the, the moment that it kind of clicked for me was when you go to like this warehouse or whatever and it's an action level and the two people you're with, the cops that you're working with, you're like, okay, wait outside. I'm going to go in by myself. So I go in by myself and the first thing I do is find a place to lay down and then I eat a raw onion and take a nap for eight hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, that, that's, very good. That's a video game story. No, that's a stinky agent. Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> just take uh, an onion out of my pocket, <laughs> eat it raw and whole, then take a nap for eight hours while people are outside waiting for me. It's beautiful. So The Last of Us does qualify in that you can tell the story about how you collected a bunch of bricks and some handkerchiefs and created Molotov cocktails out of them. Sure. <laughs> That's a story right there. I have a question for Jason that the rest of you may be able to weigh in on. Uh, how do you break news that no one else has yet in video games? How do you do a scoop without copying off somebody yeah, else? I do that too. You know people. It's connections. Mm-hmm. You talk to people, dang yeah. it. I can't tell you because then you would steal my job. Like, I, I like my job. <laughs> my guess here is that it's you have been talking to people long before such news uh, occurred, right? I mean, that's that's... Yeah. There's no there's no way to practice this technique. I mean, that's uh, one way. Another way is yeah. you just make it up and like some of the time you'll be right and then you delete yeah. the rest of them. <laughs> like those Twitter prediction threads where exactly. you post like every basketball team is going to win the finals and then you delete all of them except the one that won. Video <laughs> games is a stupid industry. 90% of what you say is going to happen. Yeah. Like uh, we're recording this on Monday morning. Uh, Microsoft's going to lay off 10,000 people. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right? That's going to happen. Uh, right? Right? Oh, hey, that's just, ridiculous. That'll never happen. You just wait for Nintendo to pay you $100,000, and then you write uh, a payola story about uh, what they're up to. That's one thing you do. No, it, it it's... You just have to be talking to people, and, like, I've I've many times talked about the... E3 that was in Santa Monica where many journalists were bumbling around, not sure what to do. But for me, it was 
it was a great opportunity to just like get a bunch of journalism done because I just went around where all all the game developers had their little kiosk or whatever, mm-hmm. went and did an interview with all of them, and then took like two paragraphs from that and made a news story. And uh, and I had multiple people coming up to me at that event being like, "Where are you getting all this news?" Like, we're not seeing any news. How are you finding this news? <laughs> like, this news has not been delivered to me. <laughs> Give me the news. Well, that reminds me, Brandon, of you and me going to, uh, what was that French thing? Game Connection, right? And just being like, oh, there's a bunch of developers here just like showing their prototypes off. We just bust it in and be like, hi, who are you? <laughs> Talk to them. And the, that's how we exposed Tose. Yeah. Um, a, a trick of mine from over a decade ago, I don't think this would work anymore, is uh, realizing there's still a bunch of magazines being printed and none of them print people know about the internet. Um, so you subscribe to every magazine and then you make a little news story on oneup.com, like excerpting something from like an interview in a magazine that they didn't do themselves and you beat them to their own story. Hmm. Yeah. Very good. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, it's hard to do now. People actually <laughs> used to do that to uh, Game Developer Magazine. It was frustrating because we did have a website, and then Game Developer Magazine would come out, and then other other websites would be like, ch- <laughs> they would be excerpting our interviews and doing all this stuff, and they'd be getting all these uh, views and things. And I'd be like, where's our version of this story? Telling you. Telling We're you. in the same it office. It's great. We're here. <laughs> just, just do it. <laughs> This this still happens to us. So at Bloomberg, uh, we have to. This actually recently changed, but at least until like a week ago, uh, our articles would go live on the Bloomberg terminal 15 minutes before they're allowed to be on the web. And so there are all these Twitter accounts that are set up because they have terminal accounts to just like tweet our headlines and stuff. So uh, wow. sometimes I think our these. delay is like an hour. So uh, at one point, I think last year or a couple of years ago, I had broke the news that. Uh, the next Call of Duty, Treyarch's Call of Duty, was delayed, and the Call of Duty was was skipping a year, basically doing a Modern Warfare 2 expansion this year instead of a new game. And uh, immediately, like, 4,000 people were just tweeting the headline or copying other people tweeting the headline while I was like, girl, I can't even, like, break the news myself and just have to sit and wait for it to go Giving through the those terminal and away. get on the web. It's really... Yeah, they actually changed that, like, last week, which is nice. It's... it's uh, Brave new world here at Bloomberg.com. What are all those data miners going to do? Those poor data miners. Yeah, there's a Twitter account called Walter Bloomberg that literally just exists to tweet terminal <laughs> headlines. It's really crazy. It's good stuff. I, you know, I actually was just, I was mailing out a bunch of um, review codes for Hyper Gun Sport. And uh, Hyper Gun Sport. actually the, uh, the, the, our producer was... We we actually got a response. For this I'd never seen this before. We got a response from a website that was like, "Here are our rates." Wow, <laughs> that's a new oh, one. Oh wow, <laughs> yeah. What was it? Was it Bloomberg? <laughs> yeah, you you can't afford our rates. Oh wait, so are you are you telling are you telling uh, aspiring video game journalists who are listening that they can break a story no one's ever written about before by? Uh, writing about your video game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was sort of an aside, I guess. Um, Rude. Classic. I was like, how 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 mean how mean do I want to make this? I, I, I <laughs> thought you were going to say, are you saying aspiring video game journalists can make a lot of money by charging game developers for oh reviews? God. Yeah. Mm. It, it turns out, I think that the website we we uh, were pitching to had been purchased like in the last year by some oh, weird yeah. aggregate something or other and wasn't a real website anymore and and there's just none of the employees are left it's just a bunch of robots yeah they're just all gone that if they if they quote unquote reviewed your game it would be written by an ai based on like the steam description yes. someone like now that. that's that's what i call content i have <laughs> yeah someone did do that it, he he was like i'm a journalist from nigeria and i would like to write a review of your thing so i did gave it and it was it was totally just like a thesaurus he actually was like here's the review hope you enjoy it he like mailed me back and everything he was a real person it was odd that's that's bonkers dude i dare anybody out there to to feed any of my writing to an ai and try (laughs) to get something as good as what i'm working on right now over here uh (laughs) it's not gonna happen because i'm because i i change every god darn uh time baby you can't you can't robotize me can't do it. 
here's my next topic before the break. Uh, you have an investor meeting in six minutes to sure. pitch them Damn. a new Wait, social. Do I? Yeah, you do. All, oh, all oh. four of you. You have an investor meeting in six minutes to pitch them a new social media platform for gamers. What's your presentation? It's Animal Crossing. <laughs> so I say we're going to make Animal Crossing, and it's uh, it's for gamers. Animal Crossing, <laughs> but it also has uh, Picto Chat and the Miiverse is there. I I I'm going a different direction. Social right. network for gamers, so all the cool people can go somewhere else. Right. Mm. <laughs> um, so- Gamer jail. <laughs> fun jail. It's called funjail.com. Yes, fun there jail. <laughs> gamers go here. Everybody else over there. <laughs> no non-gamers allowed, exclamation point. Like a, uh, oh. Oh, actually, has, has anyone ever done something that's... Um, that's for gamers, but it's by gamers. <laughs> mm. I see that. Four G B. Interesting. No, I think gamers are incapable of making things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my new gaming company is for gamers by suits. Ah, Serious right. question: Does G four mean gamers, 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 gamers? Is that what that means? <laughs> I think so. Uh, yeah. I thought it meant like the airplane, and it was just selling the illusion that you would have a private jet if you play video games. G four. That's why every attempt to launch G four gets downsized. There's too much redundancy. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's my social network for gamers. Uh, Tim Burton's Animal Crossing. It's just an Animal Crossing yeah. that looks like a really like bad modern Tim Burton movie, and they get like literally Tim Burton and Todd McFarlane to design mm-hmm. it, and then that's you log in, and it's just it's Animal Crossing. Kingdom Hearts Crossing. You can friend of. people, and it ends. It ends, you know, it adds their houses. Animal Crossing is basically a social network with a, a low usability, you know, quaintly, cutely low usability. Uh, they just up the usability so that users can interface with users a little bit more conveniently. And then you end up with a, a much more, fr- you just take some of the friction, most of the friction out of Animal Crossing, and then you end up with a, uh, uh, a social media platform that is, uh, it's new and exciting and it's for gamers. Frank, I want to hear your insert credit throwback. Oh, uh, I, I want to know if um, if the uh, trademark for Shaga Gamer has been abandoned <laughs> oh, <laughs> from uh, yeah. insert credit Shagagamer. Yeah. six or whatever it was. Yeah. Three, yeah, yeah. three. Wow, um, Shagagamer. Yeah, Shaga- yeah. Um, but uh, no, we got to think. You know, Tim, your idea like might actually work. We got to think about what gets us money. Oh right? yeah, like we gotta not, think. We, we gotta think of a great, a great joke that's also profitable. Social networks and money are not like those two things. Well, actually, I do have an idea for 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 making money in in the way that I mean, people do pitch this way sometimes. We could say that we're gonna build a network, social network, on top of Xbox Live, and then Microsoft is going to buy us. That's like the that's a uh, oh, that's a good business pitch. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make something that works and has potential, and then they'll buy us so that we don't compete. Yeah, and then they'll or you break just it. make something decent and put all sorts of signs in there that say Saudi Arabia rules or whatever. And then, <laughs> and then, and then uh, did you know yeah, women you can drive here? <laughs> yeah, it's true. We don't kill journalists here. It's Twitter, but you can share all your hottest tips and tricks and and codes. Love it for uh, games, and then oh, okay. people can upvote and downvote uh the the uh the power meter level uh for uh how hot your tip is pro tips oh and it looks like the game pro guy that the higher it is the more excited he is uh, i was just thinking like a temperature gauge sort of thing i don't want to like right. you know it could be pixel art and every time someone hearts your post it like adds another zelda heart so yeah. that if you've got like ten thousand likes, people to scroll for like an hour <laughs> yeah. to get down your right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and like it that. just That's shows good. your Zelda street cred or whatever. And if it has no likes, then your post just beeps incessantly. <laughs> yeah, and if you get enough likes, you get front paged. And that means we put you on the front page. So if you go sure. to if you go to shagagamer dot com, like that'll show up right away. Yeah, you get yeah. levels based on how many followers you have, and the more followers, mm-hmm. the higher level. You are, and then you get like more powerful. There you go. I think you would have to give people like MySpace slash Live Journal levels of control and over like how their posts are presented in the feed, so you can have your little animated avatar and your own little graphics for your little things. And then, and now I'm starting to think of it as too serious of a, of a real thing. But it's a, it's just you know you make a whole lot of gamer references. Put put Mario in there. Pixel art Mario. There you go. Am pixel art Mario. That's the like icon. 
and it makes the jump sound when you yeah. when you click it's them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't like a post, you jump a post. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I jumped that one. <laughs> Now we're getting into it. <laughs> that hot tip helped me get to the third level. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas. I'm not looking for hot tips that help me get to the third level. I'm looking for hot tips that help me beat the fourth board. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> sorry, oh, no! I, I did. I did step ahead of that. I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's <buzzer> noise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after a quick break. A Quibi? Yeah, a Quibi. Oh, man, I forgot about Quibi. God, Quibi rules. <laughs> there was an employee at some point who was, like, annoyed with people pronouncing it Quibi. Yeah. They were like, it's not Quibi, it's short for Quick Bites. So it, <laughs> but then it, it should it, be it, Quibi. Yeah, it should be Quibi. I love that they were upset that the first part was getting mispronounced. The second part was getting mispronounced correctly. I don't know. It was. Uh, well, they should have just made a thing with a different name, I think, would have been a good idea. Welcome back to Insert Credit. It's time for us to go to the Dirt Bag. This is the part of every single episode where one of our faithful listeners who subscribe to us at patreon.com slash insert credit for mere dollars a month gets access to a form that allows them to submit their very own questions to potentially be answered on this show. Uh, they also get monthly bonus episodes and other cool exclusive content like, uh, for instance, uh, Brandon, what's been on the feed lately? Oh, we had, uh, let's see, Azure Lore did a longer version of her uh, Rieko Kodama obituary kind of memorial thing. Um, we also have a huge bonus credit that we have. We have now uh, almost, we have 30 of them actually as of. Oh yeah. So you get 30 episodes, extra episodes that range between uh, over an hour and one minute. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a joke. <laughs> One of them's just a minute. But most yeah. most of them are thirty minutes to an hour. So um, there's there's a lot of stuff. If you want to hear us saying a bunch more nonsense than usual, that's where you go. Hear Frank talk about the married with children game that never happened. Right. Uh, you can get that on the bonus credit. Uh, anyway, one of our patrons submitted this question. His name is Spencer. He asks. Which game console library's boxes have the best graphic design? Uh, Mega Drive. Uh, now, Frank, this is something you submitted yourself on a previous episode for us to talk about. Uh, that happened really like a year ago, and I think we're uh, we're getting around to it by listener request. Huh? Anybody who's ever walked through a good used game shop in Tokyo, Japan, uh, has either uh, has either had no soul or <laughs> stopped and stood in front of the Sega Mega Drive section for well over three, four, six hours, you know, until they kick you out yeah, of the they store. Just have, uh, uh, they have less in the way of the, like, branding stuff that, that takes up too much of the the real estate, and so you got a little more area to to engage with art. And for whatever reason, there there w- there just was an aesthetic, kind of, for, for Mega Drive games. Yeah. Not in the exact way that there was for, like... In television games that had those water color painterly things but there certainly was more of a a traditional art perspective that came onto those mega drive covers for some reason so is is this question specifically referring to the graphic design template that Correct. the game oh, box okay. art so, yeah, okay. okay so i mean mega drive uh you know they, they had a logo and a stripe which was nice uh i think the sega genesis with the the weird, uh, the sort of weird grid from some of the early games was weird, uh, though not as good as the Master System, which had I the agree. black and white grid, which was blue very striking. White. Blue and white, yeah, yeah, blue yeah. and white. There was a post on a on an Instagram for a, a, a store. A shout out to Self Edge on the Lower East Side of uh, New York, Manhattan. Uh, they had a shirt, like an, uh, a, a a Japanese like denim shirt or like a, a a flannel shirt, and they were like, "It looks like a Sega Master System box." And I was like, "What?" So cool to hear someone reference a uh, someone in the textiles business reference the I Sega mean, Master System. Master System is maybe the first time I ever noticed. Uh, mm-hmm. The graphic design of, of, of game packaging, um, and it's because um, it was at Toys R Us, and this is when they had uh, those Vid Pro cards. When when you walk down yeah. the aisle, and, and there'd just be the flat cards so that you would flip over to see the screen. and and yeah. you know it was just a wall plastered in these things in a grid, and the Master System section was a grid of grids. You know, it was just like this solid section of like white background with blue stripes and in a, in a grid pattern and. I just it was very striking at the time, and no, the art itself on those packages usually not it was weird, great, yeah, right. It was um, it but, was like a weird like 
like Photoshop uh, kind of like just a, a transparent PNG on top of that background. Right. Like, it was just, yeah. And, the, and there's the wrestling guy who's like holding his own head or whatever. There's all kind of weird art on the. It doesn't. So wait, does that not count for the premise of this question? The premise this of this does, question this is does count. Only, yeah, it, 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 it is, counts, so it is yeah. the template of, of the packaging. And, and um, I think, I think it's, the, I think it's the one that is the most uh, coherent across the yeah. library. Isn't that well, it has system. the same font for the titles of all the games. Well, but that's what I'm asking. Are you, you're not counting the art, the game art itself. You're just game counting the, the, the package, the, the, okay. the template uh, yeah. for packaging. Yeah, my vote goes to the Nintendo GameCube, which always I always felt mm. like had a pretty oh, elegant that little, little stripe at the top. The little stripe at the top, the GameCube logo, the little mm-hmm. arc. It always like it was like a little distinct art. Um, I don't like the shading on on that. I would kind of consider the the actual art to be part of this, just because like consistency across that. I don't know. At least that's what I was thinking about. And I think GameCube, we were at the point where the games industry is modern enough that like people knew how to make really cool art and there's some really cool stuff on that i remember being unreasonably upset at like how low resolution the art was on the box of a uh, super smash bros melee just being like why Ooh. is it so low res and the art not not the template i think uh, my true honest answer that for the best template uh for in video game history is the japanese Sega a Super 32X. Uh, the 32X yeah, are hot. template has a yellow stripe and the Japanese 32X logo. If you've never seen it, everybody look up the Japanese 32X logo. It's so, so fresh looking. And the fact that it's there on every every box for the game presented with that very bold yellow stripe, I think that's uh, that's my favorite template. Mm. I might get a lot of flack for this, but I have a lot of fondness for the Game Boy Advance template, that kind of silver stripe on the side that looks like it's the same shape as the indentation on the top of a cartridge. I love it. I don't like the shading on that either. There's, it's Mm. too, uh, it's not, I mean, you know, I'm one of those guys who was genuinely excited for uh, iOS 7 to make everything flat and gradients. Uh, Ah. uh, I I never liked the way, whenever, whenever anybody tried to add some texture to any sort of a graphic design accents and this is, which is why the 30 the, the, the japanese 32x speaks to me the way it does because it's very flat there's a nice uh, sort of a medium thick black stroke even on, on, like on the logo it's uh it's it's a very delicious looking template in my opinion sega's just the best at this stuff man i've got two one is uh neo geo cd which is very simple mm-hmm. but i like how it has looks kind of like an album cover it's got like a little stripe down the side it has the 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 multiple logos in a relatively uh, tasteful positioning it it just kind of looks like a premium product to me even though it's quite simple um and and there were there were some wiggle room that you could do with those things and then the other is in terms of just to co- sort of extend the question to the industrial design of the or the package design of the actual cases themselves i think the neo geo pocket yeah color clamshell boxes oh. are kind of ah. best looking oh those are nice i'm gonna i'm gonna i've got a nomination that i'm gonna put in chat here which is the the namcot famicom uh clamshells oh, yeah, those, they're really nice Ooh, good line yeah, yeah those I, really, I, I really like the templated nature of it i like that there's numbered on the spine like books yeah. um i just and and the, like I don't actually really like Namco games, I think, but uh, this looks like a good time just looking at these together. Just looking at them. Here's my next topic right oh, here. Oh, wait, wait. I was yeah. I was going to say that I want to make sure we mention the PC Engine Super CD okay. and uh, the Japanese Sega Saturn, which are, I mean, you know, I'm saying 32X is the best, right? But that's, uh, that's maybe a too quirky an answer even for me. I think if you, though, the PC Engine CD, uh, Super CD ROM yeah. games... The, that's some real nice design. I mean, you know, I love uh, it. Template. I, I decided not to mention it. Yeah, after, after not after saying I don't like anything with texture or or you know or whatever, I do I do like the Japanese Sega Saturn with the gold and the really classy embossed looking. Yeah, logo. that little uh, that so, little band works. It's one of those three. All right, this is a topic we've approached situationally in the past, but this week I'd like to codify our policy. Okay. Under what circumstances? Is it unethical to buy a video game? Oh, geez. Shoot. 
Is it, is it because <laughs> I brought up SNK again? Uh, no, I had this written up <laughs> okay. before we is started. This is because of Harry Potter. Is that what it is? Oh, HP. Um, is it's it about because- it's about a lot of things. Yeah. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism. Next. Yeah. Uh, so it's never ethical to buy a video. Game. Yeah, it's that is it's, true. It's a tough one. Like I think that it's it's a sliding scale, and it kind of depends on your feeling and how you relate to it. Like I can't give SNK money right now, but I understand that other people are fine with it. And but for me, it's very personal because like I've loved this company for for so long, and I started working with them, and then this happened, and it's like I I can't. I can't contribute to this, you know? Um, but for other people who are like, my livelihood is doing King of Fighters streams, I understand w- that the no ethical consumption uh, swings a little further one way or another for you. Um, for, like, Harry Potter, yeah, it's 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 like, shouldn't probably be supporting that uh, because it does put money in J.K. Rowling's pocket. But, uh... At the same time, like, man, I don't know. It's it's so complicated. Um, there's so many arguments that you can make one way or another, and I feel like you just got to take your own stand. And uh, as long as you can commit to it, as long as you can feel solid about it, do what you're you're going to do, because uh, we're, we're, we're all in this capitalism right here. I'm not buying the Harry Potter. I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, would you, though? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't have bought a Harry Potter game, even if... <laughs> Uh, you know, J- J.K. was out there on 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 Twitter uh, uh, saying cool stuff. <laughs> you know, if she'd been if she'd been imagine an alternate timeline where she'd been saying really cool stuff for the last couple of years, <laughs> right? Right? Like if she'd been if she'd been talking if she'd been introducing you to cool new metal bands or uh, <laughs> you know talking about Japanese noise rock or uh, you know like if she'd been if she'd been doing that instead, I still would have been like. I don't care about this. Like, like whatever. Tweeting action button reviews. Yeah, yeah. Tweeting links to my YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, good. All right. Well, whatever, man. I might have. I might have if she was doing that. Yeah, that actually is a good question. <laughs> I feel like it's always unethical to buy a video game. And so you kind of have to make your own decision uh, along a spectrum of like, okay, like what am I supporting with this with this purchase, pur- purchasing choice? Am I supporting someone who has said awful things? And what does that mean to me? Uh, do I also have my own complicated feelings towards the Harry Potter franchise? Like I'm sure I've heard from, I've actually talked to and heard from a lot of people who are trans and de- detest and uh, find J.K. Rowling abhorrent, but still have their own kind of like complicated feelings and uh, emotional attachments to Harry Potter. And then the other side of that is that like every game is made under some sort of unethical situation, whether it's like people getting overworked or underpaid or like working hours that aren't, they're not paid for. There's always some sort of compromise you have to make, not to mention the whole like, and, and the, the iPhones we're using were all made by in Foxconn under horrible conditions. So uh, generally, yes, the answer is no ethical conception under capitalism, but I don't think it's it's uh I don't think that's like uh, a mantra you can use to get away with not also making your own personal ethical decisions. Like you have to stand you have to draw a line somewhere for yourself. It's just that like it's different for different people and some people might be like, you know, I love Harry Potter. It means so much to me. I'm going to buy this game because I think it to me it is like surpassed its creator, but I won't do this other thing. And everyone just draws their own line. Okay, this is bullshit. Everyone just give me a rule. One rule. <laughs> No, no buying video games. Okay, I got, I got some rules. Number one, most ethical way to purchase a video game is to uh, uh, steal it. Internet Archive. Uh, they got every PlayStation One game, every PlayStation <laughs> Two game, every Sega Saturn game, every Dreamcast game, every NES game, every Commodore sixty four game. They got them all. Get a Mister. That's an ethical purchase. Six hundred dollars on MrAddons dot com. Uh, cha ching. Cash register noise. Mister Addons on at Twitter. Check check him out. Um, and rule number two is. If it's on Game Pass, they already got the money, right? Yeah. If the game goes up on Game Pass and then the guy gets canceled, you can still check the game out and see what it's like. Like, He's (laughs) probably not going to have a job anymore. It's not going to equal any more money for him. It's on Game Pass. You can download it and check it out for 15, 20 minutes and then decide it's, it's not for you. It's okay. So Game Pass is is ethical. Thank you. Anyone else have any hard rules? Yeah, my rule is you can't use the idea of no ethical consumption under capitalism to just do whatever you want. You still have to. You That's still a good have rule. to think about it. 
um, and and whether it aligns with your personal values. You can't you can't use it as a give up. That's not what it's for. The idea is we we can't all be ethical all the time. Frank, give me one rule. I don't know if you this know? is not an answer to your question. I just want to point out that I do not believe it is ever unethical to uh, uh, pirate something that they will not sell to you. I like exactly. that. That's a good rule. Exactly. Uh, Jason, I'll let you go because you have to talk to people in video games and you uh, can't burn any bridges right now. Uh, here is my <laughs> last question. I burn bridges every day. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, <laughs> I, try, I get, a mister. I, get a mister. I just genuinely – no, it's not about burning bridges. I just genuinely believe – I agree with Brandon that like that rule applies, but you set your own personal boundaries. I guess a rule – a good rule would be don't buy games that – Retail price, wait for a sale. No, I don't know. I don't have any rules. <laughs> That's All right. good. I think uh, we're we're running low on time, so let's go right to our lightning round. This oh. week we're playing a game I like to call Moby Critic. Uh, I am going to generate a random video game on Moby Games, and you all have to review it in one sentence whether you've played it or not. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Your first game is Gourmania. For the iPad. Ooh, good mechanics, but uh, uh, left me unfulfilled. Too many chewing noises, zero out of ten. <laughs> this meal is uh, more of an appetizer. Uh, not so filling. <laughs> Thank you. This, uh, the level of violence, just too much violence, too extreme for me. <laughs> Very good. All right, Very your next good. game is River City Rival Showdown for the 3DS. I didn't realize we were going to get to know what these were. I thought we were just going off the titles, but we can actually look at them. See. River City Rival Showdown. Uh, it's another Cuneo game. <laughs> if you're into that you sort of thing, it. here's yeah, one of those. Enjoy. Nobody brings the ruckus like Cuneo and his pals, and it's even more fun if you're fans of uh, see if you want to see where modern masterpieces like Yakuza took their influence. I'm trying to conjure a, a, like a, a, a misinformed critic. Kunio and his hot-blooded pals. <laughs> hot, hot-blooded high school friends. Itadaki Street, Gorgeous King for the PS1. It's Monopoly for uh, CPAs. I've already reviewed this uh, before. It's Monopoly for CPAs. Please give me a street. Did you ever play Monopoly and think, ah, it's not enough like doing my taxes for real. Well, Itadaki Street is for you. That's my actual review of Itadaki Street. I've played a lot of Itadaki Street. I think they made one of these with Dragon Quest slimes or something. Play that one instead. Zero out of ten. Exactly. (laughs) Play that DQ one. I wanted a gorgeous queen. Zero out of ten. Your next game is Super Boppin' for the DOS. (laughs) For the DOS. (laughs) Yeah. The DOS? <laughs> yes, the disc operating system. Uh, uh, Super Disc-operating. Boppin expands on the original Boppin with 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 at least 160 boards. <laughs> Super Boppin <laughs> is perhaps the only Apogee published game to not have a single screenshot on Moby Games. 10 out of 10. Oh, it's a, it's a flip screen game. So, All violent uh, features were censored, it says. <laughs> what does that mean? Super Boppin is a, is a good, wholesome... Uh, a flick screen game uh, with plenty of boards uh, to challenge. Uh. <laughs> You're saying this just to piss me off. You just keep going back to boards. No, uh, I, don't I like hate it. it myself. It's not as bad as the the word for shooting game. Uh, the description for this says all violent features were censored. So zero out of ten for <laughs> censorship. I am very angry about that. Res, please for the Xbox One. <laughs> Res, please. No, thank you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think we got to call it on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> congratulations, Jason. You are a winner of this episode. <laughs> wow. Just for that, you're going to get the homework of writing a question for the next episode. Uh, this is the point where uh, we'll, we'll keep this short this week. But uh, if you have anything you'd like to recommend our listeners to check out, whether it's something that you've been doing or something that you've been enjoying, now is the time to share that with our wide audience of thousands. Millions. Just say millions. It's easy. Check out all millions of you should check out the Triple Click podcast, <laughs> which uh, I record with Kirk Hamilton and Maddie Myers. And uh, I don't like is... triple clicking. I like stopping at a double click. You think you triple, you put it on another button. Put it on a different it takes, button at this point. It takes fewer than three clicks to go on your favorite podcast app to reach us. All you, you just have to kind of tap in a few words. You don't have to click that much. That's my secret, Jay Shry. I don't have a favorite podcast app. I don't even mm. know what podcast apps are, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. 
Spotify is that one? Do they have podcasts on there? They do. It's on Spotify? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I got some stuff. Um, wait, I only have one thing. <laughs> one thing's enough. I, I write I write recommendations down in my notes app whenever I think of them. And uh, here, here what I have is dandelion leaves are a free vegetable that just grows outside. So <laughs> that's something that you can remember. You can eat dandelion leaves. Sometimes you're, you're cooking and uh, you're like, you know what? I don't have enough vegetables. You just go outside and get dandelion leaves. You can you can cook them up. You can eat them raw. They're totally, they're they're tasty. They're a good little vegetable. They got vitamins in them. Pickweed, that's another one yeah. you can eat. You can turn that into a pesto. It's really nice. Eating weeds, rules. And you know, uh, also similarly to a piggybacking off Brandon's rule, if you're looking for something DIY, a DIY project for the weekend, and you happen to live in New York City, um, take any one of those rats home and just or just wash it under you know, the <laughs> hottest water you got in your kitchen sink, and it's going to be as cute as anything you can That's get right. at the yeah. store. Free rats. They're just walking around out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're for you. Uh, They're cuddly little critters. I don't know. Well, was that was that your one, Brandon? I got yeah, one. that's all I have. Uh, the, the only piece of media I've interacted with since last time is uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Played through that. It's a pretty good game. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it holds up. Holds up. Holds up well. Yeah. You know what game I like better than Castlevania Symphony of the Night is uh, Love you guess. Love you guess. Uh, is, Love you guess. Is, is, <laughs> is, is Elder Gate, directed by Koji Igarashi for the PlayStation One, which does not have an English. Oh, I wasn't It does guessing. not have an English uh, localization. It doesn't have like a fan translation patch. So I would recommend if anyone's looking for a game to uh, fan translate so that, uh, you know, you've already missed your chance to get recommended uh, over dinner by me to another person uh, because last night it was discovered it didn't have a fan translation patch. Um, I thought Elder Gate was when a bunch of elderly people decided they wanted to hate women in uh, yeah. the elderly yeah. industry. <laughs> yeah. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Oh my okay. God. Yeah, very good. That's Same Elder thing Gate. reminds me, I have one more recommendation, which is that uh, the C Engine Super CD slash arcade CD game Private Idol has been translated, oh. um, and it's a really neat one. It's a it's a late uh, 1995 PC Engine CD game made by Hunex, mm-hmm. and uh, it it just got translated, and it it has like full screen portraits and bitmap animations, and does uh, text scaling and stuff, and it's basically a sort of like those menu driven. Um, detective games except it has rpg um interactions in overworld so you like one w- walk around and talk to all the characters to figure out to investigate and figure things out and stuff and it's pretty cool so uh give that a look on your your rom translating website whatever that website is. what is that website called frank you know with all the rom yeah maybe rom no no that's rom- not real i just made that up i just made that oh, up the, the, <laughs> the rom hacking rom, yeah, rom hacking that website Big yeah, website. Hacks. I what it's called. The thing about that website, though, is that uh, there one time their official Twitter account responded to me on Twitter saying, "Stop being political and tweet about video games." Did they? Oh no! Oh, very good. Oh no! So just oh, FYI, Jesus Lord. See this 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 whole consumption. God, elder elder gate indeed. Capitalism <laughs> yeah. that we got going. It's not ethical. Man, if they if they fan translate Elder Gate, I know Jason Schreier would like it. I know you'd like it. It's a good RPG. It's by Konami. It's got some sweet coding people on it. Uh, and it was never translated. It's a PS1 RPG. There's only two other PS1 RPGs by Konami, right? And they're both really good. Uh, so, I mean, all three of them are good. I didn't play it until last year, so uh, I'm not pretending like I know about it. I'm not actually recommending Elder Gate, by the way. Don't put that in the... That, that's not my recommendation. I don't have a recommendation today. Well, I, I'm going to get one out of you really quick. And maybe it's that. I don't know. Well, let's um, hear it. Recommend me one PlayStation game... Uh, mm-hmm. To load up to look at uh, the last time that uh, a lot of money was spent on pixel art. That's kind of how I want to follow up uh, somebody. Oh, night. shoot. Oh, for PlayStation, though, not Saturn? Man, there's so many of those. Sa- uh, PlayStation specifically, yeah. Okay, so it had a Saturn version later, but man, Tokimeki Memorial, dude. All that's right. got some incredible pixel art. And I mean, it's not it's not like a pixel art side scroller sort of a yeah, video yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Though yeah. it's like the, the, the amount of pixel art in there. And also... Um, you know, Brandon was just talking about Super Idol, uh, which reminds me of the SD Snatcher, where you know there's there's scenes where you walk around, and in addition to the adventure stuff, um, Snatcher for PlayStation One has really incredible pixel art, just like okay. gorgeous, gorgeous buckets of pixel art. Uh, Frank, I got one more for you, which is check out uh, Mad Stalker. Mad Stalker is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's got a lot of stuff going on. 
Um, I'll I'll come up with some better ones for you later. That looks pretty good. This is a this is a fun exercise for me I, because yeah. I'm like I'm rolling through a bunch of Saturn games in my mind and being like, no wait, no that's 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 wrong. <laughs> that's the, that's the platform. I don't know if that core is ready yet, and I don't and I don't want to hook up now. real hardware. Maybe ever again. It's not it's not fully ready, but it's going to be ready soon, is what I hear. And uh, then, man, tell you what, yeah. a lot of recommendations from me coming your way. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's just, I mean, yeah, Symphony of the Night, everyone's talked about it to death, but just playing it again, it's like, God, this art's unreal. It's some incredible pixel art, yeah. looks real good. See, Elder Gate is full 3D, so it doesn't have any pixel art in it. I still don't know what Dark Metamorphosis does in that game. I couldn't figure it out, so. Just... Dark Metamorphosis. Dark Metamorphosis. Said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, God. <laughs> guys, guys bonkers. I replayed that last year uh, as well. My top uh, 10 played video games on PlayStation uh playstation 5 for last year because i just the whole castle 100 210 percent whatever it is 208 percent. i forget no 201.4 sounds like you've got to get a mister a mister and install the hack we'll that uh uh removes the black bar frank are you using the version that removes the black bar from the top of the screen no oh man well are you still playing it well no i already beat it uh there because there's there's a hacked iso which you can carry your save over to that that removes the it, it it does it full screen. It's really nice. It just um, what gives you more vertical. Yeah, just a little view. bit more vertical. It's cool. a, it's a little a little treat. If you ever if you're, you know next time you play the game, uh, 10, 15 years from now, it'll you know try that one. It's a nice. Here's the fun lie. thing you maybe haven't done yet on the Mister. Maybe you have. Um, oh, let's find out. I've been waiting for someone to make this a feature, and that's uh, finally someone did. On the Master System core, you can have it render out the rest of the window. Whoa. Um, and it, it's broken on almost every game um, because no one expects you to see that stuff. But, you know, it it, yeah. it, it, it almost doubles your view. And, like, all the Sonic games work perfectly. Yeah, I'm going to try and that. those are the games where the, uh, the, the narrow window is the worst. Yep. You can actually play those Sonics. Playing an original Sonic the Hedgehog game uh, in the widescreen era is is really depressing because that's th- that that aspect ratio is really squeezed the sega genesis ones it's like well, you're uh, still gonna get four three on the game gear but you're gonna get like twice the yeah, four three you do on twice the four three game. yeah <laughs> yeah just uh i mean it, it really suffers on the game gear uh, yeah incredibly i think the game gear just sucks i like that game gear somebody yeah. asked me why we don't do a best game gear games episode and i'm just like are you serious i'll do actually it. jaffe i don't i don't exactly like this is a half-baked thought i had for uh, we're for still for doing the, the episode yeah. Right which one yeah, oh, yeah are we oh, yes sorry. i didn't do the sign off yet okay. yeah, we're still here uh i can do it right let's now it. if you like sorry uh, i kind of yeah i assumed that yeah i don't know whatever all Go right ahead. let's uh, do it let's sign uh, off yeah uh rate and review our show wherever and however you can uh support us on patreon.com slash insert credit where you yes you can become a patron to your own topics listen to monthly bonus episodes and get other exclusive ppc you can also join our community at forums.insertcredit.com or look for Insert Credit on YouTube. This show is edited by Esper Quinn with original music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Barry Sheffield. I'm Jason Schreier. And you have now cleared the board. the board. <laughs> Beat the board. <laughs> <laughs>